I think as we get ever more data provided from ever more devices, ever more sensors, then what we need to be able to do to survive and thrive is to have much smarter technology. The way in which people and technology work at the moment is in a very rigid, predefined way. So there's a fixed set of commands that go back and forth between the, either the human instructing the technology to do something or the technology just doing its activity. What I want to be able to do in my research is to be able to break that model because actually you, it doesn't work in complex situations where you can't envisage exactly what's going to happen. You need to have a much more fluid and flexible way of making that technology work effectively with people. Underpinning this work is fundamental new advances in both making individual components smarter, so new techniques for machine learning, new techniques for decision making under uncertainty, and also how you can get a number of these smart components to interact with one another as a team in an effective way. Those are new scientific challenges that we're working on that have led to major new advances in the way that these systems can be constructed and developed. So these technologies, I think, fundamentally enhance the sorts of things that humans can do. So human disaster responders get overwhelmed with information. What this is about is combining what machines are good at processing information, learning and adapting, and providing that as a high-level way of interacting with humans. Humans are not just being presented with raw data, they're being presented with sensible opinions and sensible options because the machinery knows how to collaborate, knows when to make suggestions, and then makes them at the right time. In response to the Nepal earthquake, uh, our partners at Rescue Global took some of our technology and used it to determine where to place water filters around the Kathmandu area. So we crowdsourced information and analysis from satellite images. We identified four new areas that they weren't aware of that they subsequently sent water filters to. And that's a real example of technology being used to save lives. So, so there were critical mass of people in those four areas that would not have received water but for their smart decision making in our algorithms. In 10 to 20 years time I really see a much more seamless way of interacting with technology. It's clunky and difficult to interact with at the moment. I see a much more flexible relationship and you want the tech not just to blindly follow what it's been instructed to do but to be an intelligent partner alongside the humans. How we interact with that ecosystem of computing devices uh, will fundamentally change and will fundamentally change for the better.